Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. Gaze, gaze on the fiery cross and return to the darkness of your cold tombs, you blind... De oh, wait, this isn't going to work. This is episode 212, recorded March 26, 2024. Gruesome Magazine. I'm your host, Doc Rotten, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic, or not so classic, film from this influential, <laughs> wondrous, groovy, and gory decade. How do you like that? I switched up the words uh, with me this week. <laughs> it is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I just I just think we should would do the fourth one of these sooner than like seven years from now, which was when we did the first one. <laughs> oh, all right. We, the first two we did seven years ago? Oh, dear gosh. Uh, the right. first one, and then uh, whatever. So anyway. Not, nah, not. Nah. All right. Also joining this week is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, all around nice guy, and published author. But I don't know if he has a book handy. I don't have a copy of my book with me. Just imagine. <laughs> it says Rom. 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 I am in Canada. Visiting my beautiful youngest daughter and uh, enjoying Montreal, one of my favorite cities. Um, been a little under the weather, but I'm feeling fine now. And uh, I was very happy to see my good friend, our guest host, and surprisingly enjoying the, the film he picked to yes. torture us with. Yeah, yeah, and the film he picked is The Ghost Galleon from 1974, and that should tell you who's our guest host. If you haven't figured it out, let's welcome, uh, let's have a round of applause, everybody, everybody, for Jerry Chandler, the most named person that isn't on the crew ever. Yeah. Jerry, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Razzled, fried. Just, just get out of General Assembly a season at uh, season at work and. Uh, going into the first convention season for the convention that I volunteer with. Um, yeah. So we're, we're in crunch time for that. It's RavenCon, by the way, which is going to have uh, uh, a lot of interesting people, including one like egotistical bastard uh, writer from North Carolina. Who's a, Oh, hmm, there's another one. Or oh. Something. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I or see something where we're going. Job. I, Yes, if any of our viewers are out there and are thinking about going to RavenCon, great convention, lots of fun. Stop by and say hello. Well, let, let's if uh, yes, please do. But somebody give them an idea of where RavenCon might be in the oh, uh, in continental U.S. <laughs> RavenCon in the continental United States is uh, last weekend of this uh, coming April in Richmond, Virginia, um, at a very nice hotel that very is cool. built in. Uh, uh, Bill can back me on this as we drive guests up because I will occasionally run the shuttle when people come up to the hotel they're like oh this is nice but where's the hotel this this is the hotel well this looks like a college campus because it's <laughs> three it's three separate buildings and this sprawling whatever oh, wow. it's actually very interesting looking it has tunnels it's the uh, tunnels yeah tunnels that connect the hotels nice which is great because last year our guest of honor was Count Gore Duvall so he was using the tunnels to go from hotel to hotel to keep from sweating and also getting rained on in his makeup and to feast so we on had virgins a, so you know yeah so so we had a vampire creeping through our tunnels all weekend mm. in full regalia <laughs> and what better vampire can you have than yeah. count gore de ball oh we love this movie i'm sure he's shown this movie oh he he showed this movie he showed it sure surely uh all right. well jerry i am so happy it's been a while since i've seen you it's good to see you again sir um you. so happy that yeah. you're on board here and uh i i to no surprise that you picked the ghost galleon <laughs> which is another one of the it would have uh, been demonoid but it was the 70s so ah demonoid oh dear god and, oh, and, play, and playing on something jeff mentioned in one of the recent recordings yes i did i did not say I was going to pick Demonoid to annoy Chad when I thought I was coming on the 80s. The, the, if you go back and look at the message, it said, if because I said something, and he said, yeah, Chad's not going to be there. And I said, great, let's knock out Demonoid so it, he, he can quit worrying about it. Mm. <laughs> did it happen? Yeah, you, did it you happen? Actually, you did. I, I think I said that, didn't I? Didn't I say uh, 
He's well, not first, as mean as you first, think he is because first, he, first you said I did it. I was going to annoy Chet. And then he was like, wait, actually, I think he, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, he actually said, the record if Chad's not straight. there, we'll do demonoids. Otherwise, we'll do this. Uh, yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, that, and that's, uh, well, let's just say we are missing Chad. Chad is getting sure. better by the day and should be returning shortly. Yes, Jeff? And we all we we, all, we yeah. miss him greatly. So sure. In the meantime, we've had <laughs> we've had uh, yeah the crawling hand. We've had <laughs> special guests uh, from our uh, Patreon and uh, people that have asked a lot of questions in our feedback. And Jerry, of course, has been hanging out with us. Uh, gosh, since day one, it feels oh, like yeah. sending stuff. So uh, I'm I'm so thrilled. Uh, the growth value. Now, I before we get into this, I know this is going to come up. We're doing the Ghost Gallery. It's the third in the Templar Knights films um, from, uh, let's see if I can pronounce the director's name here. Do you, what, you want to do it? Good luck. Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it, Jerry. Amando de Osorio. Is that right? That, yeah, actually, that sounds about right. That sounds Okay, good. okay, okay. I, I was, I was Nobody has to about. drink. All right, Templar Knights. Some have called them zombies. Others have not. You have a very... Strong opinion about this. Say what it is. Are they are they zombies? Um, I don't I don't think they are. I mean, they're kind. I think they're not so much zombies. They're revenants, because when you look the origin story from the original, um, they were damned souls. Mm -hmm. They were damned souls that had to come back. Their eyes are torn out. They're blind. They don't quite act like zombies. And then first movies kind of. I think he was throwing everything he could against the wall, figuring out what to do with the mythology. The second movie refines it a little more because there were those things that like you, me, Bill and Saint were talking about that were like these oddities that you never see in the rest of the series. Mm -hmm. Like when they attack the one young lady and she immediately comes back, but she's smart. She's not blind. She's, she's drinking blood like a vampire out of the neck, hunting her friend down, in that beautiful scene with all of the mannequins yeah. and that mm, wonderful yes. red lighting and but being intelligent about it using strategy so it's like they they're more i think they're more in the line of revenants they're somewhere between a zombie and a ghost they're damn souls brought back to life and revenants like we talked about back then everybody go find decades of horror 1970s the blind dead um that part of the world particularly the part of the the country that uh the writer director grew up in had a lot of very ancient lore about revenants so it's the kind of stories he would have literally grown up hearing from the old people sitting on the corner trying to scare the me out of the children yeah, jerry makes a compelling point but let me just counter with among the 12,000 titles this movie has had, there was Horror of the Zombies, Ship of the Zombies. <laughs> oh, crap, here comes some zombies. You know, I, I don't know. If this oh, crap, here comes some zombies. That's the that's a yeah, great that, title. That'd be my title. And this one, and this one makes it even more, con more confusing because they actually chomp on one of the victims. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but Bill, the American distributors also called a movie with no vampires in it. Planet of the Vampires. Planet of the Vampires. And they also called this movie with no apes in it. Um, uh, was it Revenge of Planet Ape or something? Well, that so, was the first one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, then, and, and Countess Dracula with no Dracula. Or, or... Yeah. yeah this not was Countess. Man, I guess. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get into things. Uh, what we'll do is first kind of share what uh, when we first saw this, what our first impression, uh, what does it hold up today, stuff like that. We'll kind of give our individual thoughts on the film. After that, we'll go into a group discussion talking about the, a little bit more about the history of the Templar Knights and the, and the director and the cast. And then uh, I believe we have some feedback, Jeff. We do. All okay. right. Yes, feedback it is. All right. Let's start off with the card. And of course, if you do enjoy these, we hope you do. Please hit the like, subscribe, share with the friend buttons. Every little click help us find more horror fans, <gasps> just like you, Gary J. All right, the Ghost Galleon, <laughs> written and directed by Amando de Osorio. The cast includes Maria Pershi, uh, Jack Taylor, Barbara Ray, Carlos Limos, Manuel de Blas. No, that's not right. And Blanca Estrada. I think I. 
what did I get an 80? Maybe. I don't know. Production company is Anglo Century Films and Berlin Films, filming in Spain. Uh, filming dates were 1973. Uh, the release date was uh, June 28, 1974, in West Germany, and September 15, 1975, Madrid, and 1976 in the US. It's also known by quite a few titles. So let me see if I can do this. This is going to be terrible. El Buque. Uh, El Buque. <laughs> Yuki. Oh my God. Um, uh, Maldito. Maldito. El, El Buque. No, that's not right. I should stop while I'm at the cursed <laughs> ship. Hours later. Lili. Le Monde de, uh, de Mortes Vivens. The World of the Living Dead. Uh, Jeff, Jeff's, Jeff's dying to do this instead of me. Go, Jeff, go. <laughs> oh, there's two great German titles. That's okay. Gaster ship to the right and then Leichen, which is the ghost ship of writing corpses, and right. also that's Geister ship to Schwimmen then Leichen. I like that. Ship of floating corpses. Hmm. Oh man. So Schwimmen then is floating? The Schwimmen then, yeah. yeah. Schwimmen den. Well, it's probably swimming corpses, but you know. <laughs> And, and then here's some here's some here's some I can do. Ghost ships of the blind dead. I like that horror uh, horror of the blind dead, or the evil dead even. Uh, the blind dead three, <laughs> zombie flesh eater, ship of zombies, and uh, Bill's favorite horror of the zombies. Uh, the synopsis: the living corpses yeah, of a state. I basically worship. ran out of room, Doc. You know, there, there's yeah, more. there's more. <laughs> there's hundreds more. Yeah, the there's living corpses more. of Satan worshiping knights Templar. Worshiping Knights Templar, I should say, hunt for human victims in the 16th century galleon. Oh uh, wow, that was a that was a train wreck. But we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go with it. All right, uh, Jerry, let's start off with you, sir. Well, before, uh, before we go any farther, Doc, uh, uh, right. we need to uh, <laughs> we need to do our uh, spiel here that we are partnering with Playdown Media. Ah, yes, and thank you. In fact, they are showing this film on the Wicked Horror TV channel. And it's a pretty good copy, pretty good mm. uh, resolution. Tubi is also a pretty good one. Uh, I took a look at the Amazon one, which is pay-per-view, and it did not look good, but mm. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, Wicked Horror TV. I watched it on Wicked Horror. Yeah, yeah mm. and, and you can see us there, too, with this episode. Yeah, And we Here's look as look, so. Yeah. We look All right. Good. Let's find out when we first saw this, what our first impression was, and when the, uh, does it hold up today, and all that goodness. And Bill, we're going to let Jerry go first. Jerry, sure. sir, do you see that? I, I caught that one, right? I almost went one way, and I said, no, I'm going to go the other way. Jerry, uh, let us have it. Give us the spiel about this film. First impressions and when I first saw it. Uh, it's actually the last of the Blind Dead films that I saw. Um I'd seen the first two at some point or another long ago, bought the fourth one, uh, could never find this one. And then for whatever reason, this one turned into one of those public domain films. So about the time all of the fly by night distributors were pumping out a hundred movies on DVD for 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was in at least 10 of them under four different names. So, uh, I acquired multiple copies of it, and that's how I first saw it, probably around like 2010 or so. Um, my first impression was, uh, wow, they've kind of jumped the shark because it it's the it's the weirdest of the four Blind Dead original Blind Dead films because now there's like two recent decade that I would not recommend. Um, it. it once once I got over the fact that it wasn't really a blind dead film and I just kind of sit back and enjoy it for what it is, it's actually a weirdly fun film. It's just you have to kind of you have to take it as that that weird period in the 70s like Exorcist 2 and some of the others where they suddenly started to and even uh, uh, oh, Parker, uh, Roddy Mc, uh, um not Rodney McDowell, um, The Haunting of Hell, Hill House, Hell House, uh, where the psych, where there goes back as the, the psychic and finds uh, 
uh, Gao's body at the end. Yeah. Um, and Michael even Cuff. that one was doing, yeah, you had that weird period where it was like, we're going to take the paranormal and put it in a science framework. <laughs> and that there was like a five year or six year period of that. Yeah. And some of that stuff just got weird. And this one is definitely one of the ones that got weird with that. But all, overall, yeah, I, I enjoy it. It's kind of a turn off your brain. Don't think about the the science garbage that's being spewed out and just enjoy the fact that phony undead creatures are about to start doing horrible things to human beings for the last half of the film. Yes. Lots of hands coming at you very slowly. All right. Bill Mulligan, sir. Uh, when, when did you first see the ghost galley? What was your first impression? And does it well, up to me? Unlike Jerry, this was the first of the blind dead that I saw. Ooh, and you'll wow. appreciate how I saw it. It was an episode of Commander USA's Groovy Movies. Oh, wow. Commander we both USA. Share a love of, and if you can find any, if you can find them on YouTube, not all of them are available, sad to say. That was a blast. It was it was a fun show on US, I think it was USA Network. And USA yeah. Network. The host was a kind of seedy looking superhero who was very enthusiastic about these movies, a great performance. Uh, I can't remember the name of the actual actor, the late actor who portrayed Commander USA, but a lot of fun. And of course, the movies were cut and edited, uh, you know, uh, but he had a lot of sketches and stuff in between that, that got you through some of the slow parts of which this one has many. <laughs> um, we were talking earlier, Jerry and I were, we were all talking about how the fourth Blind Dead movie was clearly not intended to be a Blind Dead movie, but they kind of forced him to do it that way. And it's a, it's a good film. I feel like maybe this one was too, because you're right, that science stuff is so crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And I feel like maybe he had an idea for a movie. And then they said, well, of course, there's going to be some blind dead in there. It's like, I don't think so. But they had the costumes. Um, it just seems like he wanted to make a different movie, but they made him put the blind dead in there. And it takes forever for them to show up. I mean, really, the, for a blind dead movie, it takes a long time for them to show up. We ne This is the only one where I don't think we see them as the original Knights Templar that they were. There is absolutely no reason why these people should be on a ship. They can't no slow be, motion horses. <laughs> yeah, no slow motion horses. They can't be good sailors. They're flipping blind. And uh but you know, as soon as I saw, as soon as they finally showed up, I was just as I am now, just entranced by the blind dead. They are by far the slowest zombies in all of zombie. If they were any slower, they would be moonwalking backwards. Yeah. If, if the people <laughs> In these movies, and I might say also um, Horror of the Zombies, Ship of Zombies, whatever you want to call this, Ghost Galleon, these are uh, horror movies are often inhabited by some dumb people. We accept that. <laughs> we accept that. But these, these folks are at the top of the dumb pyramid. They are some of the dumbest people from the premise to all people in these movies are dumb because they're blind. If you would just shut the bleep up, they couldn't find you. And even if they did, it would take them forever to get to you. But no, people scream and scream practically. Here I am. No, no, a little to the left. Okay, okay, now come straight forward. Ah, oh, they're so dumb. So this movie is stupid, 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 but I really have a fondness for it. I really do. At least on this one, they are trapped on a ship. So Yeah. If, if you remember the first film, the one woman was smart enough to shut up and they listened and heard her heartbeat. Mm. Well, that's her I mean, own fault they've got, for getting they've all... They've no all... ears either, which apparently uh, that, doesn't yes. stop them from Thank hearing you. a heartbeat from 20 Thank feet you. away. Thank you. I'd like to, I'd like to but, point that out to people. Oh, the crows peck their eyes out so they can't that, see. Well, the crows a, apparently a, also tore the hell out of their ears, but they can hear your heartbeat. the tombs of the deaf I can't and dumb do. blind? Yeah. Tombs of, yeah. yeah. Blind dead? Tombs. Oh my gosh, just throw them all under the bus, Okay, right. sorry. Um, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bill Mulligan, thank you, sir. Jeff, uh, when did you first see the Ghost Galleon, and uh, what's your first? What was your first impression, and does it hold up today? Uh, I watched it a couple years ago, but I think it was one of those things where I put it on and I wasn't. You know, I, I actually, and I don't know if there, if it was available then. I feel like I watched it when we did Return of the Evil Dead, or. 
another strange titled movie, Blind Dead. Um, which, by the way, you guys, you and Santos did Tomb of the Blind Dead eight years ago. Okay. And we did uh, Return of the Evil Dead five years ago. Okay. And in between there, Jerry wrote a review of Tombs of the Blind Dead, which is on the website still, so folks can go check that out. There you go. Um, the uh, but anyway, so I would I would encourage people. This is I, you know, so this is the first time I really watched it and paid attention, and I watched it twice because I had to try to find some quotes because there's nothing in IMDb anyway, and to to track the story a little better. But I would encourage you to ignore the terrible dubbing. I don't know why mm. when they put English dubbing in foreign language films, it always sounds so terrible. It just never sounds, almost never sounds like the people or how they would be acting. Um, ignore some of the stuff that Bill was talking about. Ignore the fact that uh, <laughs> Noemi, who they lock up in a room, although... She's not really locked up. She's not chained. The door's not locked. They just make her take her clothes off, except her, except her bra and panties or swimming suit or whatever it is. And when she gets a chance to escape, she puts on her high heels and runs uh, clickety clickety clicking down these echoing halls. Yeah. Uh, so I guess they just expected her to stay in there without locking it. I don't know. Um, also, there's a really weird scene with Sergio laying on top of Noemi that feels like it's supposed to be a rape scene, but he's not moving at all. But he has this kind of weird leer on his face and she has a look at her face like she's mm -hmm. like uh, like she's getting raped, you know? But, but it's just very weird. I don't know what it's supposed to be happening. Uh, the galleon model is just really bad. Every time you see it, <laughs> yes. it looks like a teeny tiny boat, and it looks even worse when it's burning, and, oh, yeah. or even worse when it's sinking. So, oh, so that's that's a, that's the bad stuff. The good stuff, I'll tell you what, the blind dead are an awesome creation, and yeah. even in this one, they look great. I don't know how they did it, but they look you know different from a lot of movies like this, they look real leathery. Like they're all dried mm -hmm. up and shriveled and 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 weathered and worn and aged, you know, like aged leather or something, uh, which really plays well. I love how some of them have uh, these wispy, you know, pirate beards kind of things uh, on their skulls. <laughs> uh, but I love it. I love it. And the way that they're always moving in slow motion, it just is so cool. And, and, and yes, they're very slow. Um the other thing I really liked is when they when they do come out of the water, the water pouring out of their eye sockets. Their eyeballs? I yes. just thought that was cool. I mean, who thinks of that? Most people wouldn't have thought of that. But they showed it over and over and over again. The eye, the water just pouring out of their eye sockets when they mm -hmm. got it them makes out of the water. It such a so anyway. sound. <laughs> What's that? It sounds like a it flush makes such a bizarre sound. <laughs> yes. When yes, the water is yeah. coming through. So anyway, uh, don't pay a whole lot of it. I, I, I wish somebody could explain to us why dubbing sounds, English dubbing usually sounds so bad. I just, I don't know why they can't. Once in a while, you'll see one where you're not, mm -hmm. you don't really get that they're dubbing, and those are the good ones. But most of them, they're just, you're going, what in the world? Um, yeah. Anyway. I think you get what you pay for. Yeah. But, I was, was going to say, probably. best guess is, yeah, best guess is, Fly by night distributors, absolutely oh, no go. money, absolutely no money, and hiring whatever jerk we can grab from wherever we can get them. Yeah, that's only me. I was thinking the filmmakers would create a <laughs> make it good, but anyway, uh, and and I got no idea. But somebody else mentioned this. Why? How the hell do they get on these ships? I I, I went back and read some stuff about. The last one, uh, number two, nothing in there about banishing them to ships or anything. No. They just somebody loaded them up on these this yeah, ship, tra transporting them from A to B for some reason. Yeah. And how they how they got there five hundred years ago or whatever it is uh, doesn't quite match with the first two movies because they're running around anyway. 
Oh, you're, you're trying to find cheap. way too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, think, I, those, I just think there's a, there's a lot and, more Knights nice Templars running around than, than we yeah. There you go. And, there you go. And throwing throwing even more trouble on that. Remember, they're in another dimension when you can't see them. That's, That's true. That's right. And right. you can't see out unless. But, but seriously, with those skeletal little dinky hands, how are they supposed to hoist the mizzen mast and you know? Do well, they're not. They're not supposed to. Oh, they're not sailors. Yeah, oh, they're they're they're, tight, they're, 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 tight, they're, they're they're passengers. Yeah, not sailors. They're just, just floating go, in the dimension. Go goes where it wants to go. Yeah, All I think right. the glowing horn thing is sailing it. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the awesome. glowing yes. horn thing. Yes, which is weird. What the what the flip Wilson was that? Um, uh, all right, so <laughs> for me. Um, I, I I have seen this movie before, but I saw <laughs> Jerry one of those really bad copies on one of those ones where you buy, you know, like you get fifty of them for a buck ninety nine or something. And um, so it, you know, I never really paid much attention to it, but I love the aesthetic. I love the look of it. So watching it again this past weekend, finally in a respectable format, and uh, and and. Yeah, it's just it looks great. Uh, I okay, I dug this movie. This movie is stupid and fun. I like the creepy atmosphere that's on the boat, the ship. Um, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense when you try to shove it in the middle of all these other films. But the Knights Templar look great. They just look creepy. They look scary. You're on a ship. You can't jump overboard. I mean, you could, I guess, but you drown. So you, you know, you're stuck on the ship. Why you can't find someplace they can't get to, I don't know. But um, I guess galleons don't have a whole lot of that. <laughs> but I, you know, I just like the the idea of like when you turn around, there's like five of them coming up the, up the plank, you know, up the steps, and they they just look great. Um, I don't know what else to say about this movie. It's just it. I I remember it feeling when I saw it the original time, feeling that it felt repetitive because you know you have a couple people get on the ship and then here comes the rest of them they get on the ship, and I didn't get that feeling with this particular viewing. I got you know the progression of it like you know, okay they got there now we gotta go save them not knowing that they'd already been got right. So, uh, but what really what I what I found this time that I don't remember from the first time watching it is how just you don't like anybody. Nobody is likable. And, you know, they mm. couldn't die fast enough. It's like, and I think the ones that survive are still, you know, well, survive, air quotes, are still not likable. They're still icky. Um, because they know what's going on between a couple of the other ones, and they just, they support it. They don't, you know, ah, it's just, ugh, ugh, these people are icky. The only ones that aren't icky die first. That's one of the strange things. Uh, but anyhow, uh, yes. one last thing yes. before we move on, um, and I almost hate to admit this, I have not seen uh, Seagulls yet, and oh. I've been waiting to watch it until we cover it. Okay, well, that's a good reason. But I have it. not seen Night of the Seagulls, right? Night of the Seagulls, yep, yep, yep. So, uh, but the first two, especially the first one. It was one, you know, one of my all-time favorites. I love those. I just love the the nice Templar, and you're like, and you're right, Jerry. The the newer ones, they don't get it. They don't get it at all. No. <laughs> at all, they don't get a bit of it. Oh man! All right. So, um, before we get into looking at all the posters, Jeff, and all this, is there is there something we should be doing? Maybe is. Uh... Is there a oh, get maybe. or something perhaps we do? <laughs> well, now is the time on the decades of horror. When we dance. No, when we do. <laughs> when we dance. Tagline. So. It's now time for Taglines with Chad. Chad will be played by the annoying one. <laughs> <laughs> the annoying one. Dun, dun, dun. The, the wonderful pick of taglines that we have. Chad would have actually enjoyed these. They're nowhere near, well, some of them are nowhere near as bad as his usual uh, uh, ones that he has to go through. <clears throat> Living dead men existing on the flesh of the young and the beautiful. 
Mm. I don't like that. It mm. seems like a nightmare. But five human beings with a selfish passion with selfish passions are forced to accept the horrible reality of the ghost galleon. Too wordy. Uh, this one's, Too wordy. Yeah, this, this one's not wordy enough, and it's also just an important film. Boom. <laughs> no, that's, 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 no. that's like a slap right across one of the Yeah, that's a lie. Yeah, that's that's somebody's nose grew 30 feet. A sinister ship condemned to sail eternally till it burns and goes down the toilet at the end of the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> Literally goes down a toilet. A long yeah. long in a toilet. Or a sink. Oh it looked it looked like the sink in like the back room. Not even a big uh, sink, just an average size sink. Yep. Silence, blind fear, terror, brutality. Which man, that might These are tough choices, yeah. Word association. The, the most horrifying sacrifices in unimaginable circumstances in the middle of the ocean. And Finally, rounding it out, midnight, when the moldy cabin doors are opened by corpse hands in the pale light of the full moon, the latest ghost ride of horror begins. Mm. That sounds well, like it's I'm wordy, good. but pretty well written. Well read, well read. <laughs> that like was, that's uh, probably uh, the best the of them. Yeah. I, I had to translate that one. It was like I'm getting ready to so, get on you know a ride what? at the amusement park or something. That's been Taglines with Chad. It's <laughs> well done. Well done. All right. All right. Let's get looking at some posters here because this is always the fun part. Let's see. We got to put our little heads like this, right? Oh, no. That, that loses one. Here we go. Let's do there that. We one. Go. There we go. Got All so right. much more beautiful for a minute. Ah, <laughs> that, oh. So these are all the same film, huh? All the same film. You wouldn't know it, but yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, I I do like the top left one. Yeah, I think that's I, the one I I've seen the most. Just them carrying off that yeah. girl, and that 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 does represent it pretty well. Yeah, it looks great too. It looks like comic book cover. Although I like the bottom right one too. Mm-hmm. It looks like yeah. one of the German ones. Yeah. The bottom right one is the, the image I see the most. They the are top very left one. Yeah. They're very photogenic. The, the, the blind dead are just they're they're just such they look so good. I can see why they got squeezed four films out of this. They're just a great, great look. And then the one at the bottom left, that's got the that weird altar thing that's in the, in the show, right? Skull. Yeah. They don't, you know, I think even before they don't I explain that at all, do they? they no, don't. no, they don't. No. Uh, he not? says that uh, some, yeah, the, the professor says like one sentence, I think. No, to, you know, even, even before I saw the <laughs> no, film, I think, I think I did see I some pictures. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw some pictures of these things in Famous Monsters or some horror book or something. I'm like, oh, yeah, wow, of course, that looks really scary. And so, yeah, they, they just are a great look. Oh, yeah, I, I, I still read. Hmm. Yeah, I, I remember seeing those pictures too, Bill, and it made me want to find these films. Of course, it was you couldn't really find them until the '80s, but you wanted to find them or search for them and hope mm -hmm. they show up. I'm trying to remember. If, I probably remembered when I, we did the original ones when I saw the first two, but you know who who knows now. Yeah. All right. Well, we got some more. Um, so what, here's what, here's the Blind Dead. <laughs> here's the other the Blind time. Dead. Tombs of the Blind Dead, Return of the Blind Dead, Night of the Seagulls. By the way, terrible title, Night of the Seagulls. I mean, next to Kiwis and Whippoorwills, is there a less scary word in the world than seagulls? But okay, makes sense. And then the yeah. infamous, Jerry, tell us about Revenge from Planet Ape. For, for those of you who don't know this one and have not listened to uh, decades of horror, Tombs of the Blind Dead, which you should rectify. Um, yeah. Nice. The um, one of the Fly by Night distributors got hold of the movie and decided they needed to do what they did quite often, and that was recut and stick it back into the exploitation theaters 
I hope that nobody noticed until they were 15 minutes in that they had gotten ripped off. <laughs> and about the time mm -hmm. they were planning this um, and trying to figure out a new name for it, the first Planet of the Apes movie had come out. They were trying, uh, news of the second one was uh, in the press. And they decided these kind of look like monkeys, sort of maybe. <laughs> so they recut the opening. They got rid of the opening that was on the film. They got stock footage of just open, big country areas and a few castles here and there that were falling apart. And we put this miserably bad voiceover saying that uh, uh, at, one, there, at once long ago, uh, the Earth was ruled by a super intelligent uh, race of apes. And the apes uh, controlled mankind, but mankind rose up and put down the apes. And you know, in their final act, uh, they burned out the eyes of the apes. And in their last breath, the apes swore that one day they would return from the dead to get their revenge on mankind. And this is that day. And then revenge from planet ape, not planet of the apes, revenge from planet ape comes up on the screen. And... For years, I've just been like, I cannot imagine like the unsuspecting couple that were out on a nice evening after dinner. I was like, oh, the second Apes movie is out. Let's go in and see that. And we're 15 minutes into Tombs of the Blind Dead, wondering what in the hell was going on. Yeah. <laughs> I can't oh, imagine. Oh, it's my amazing. God. And, and one of the posters literally has a Planet of the Apes ape on it. Yeah, and and what in the one that Bill liked so much, where it discusses you know like fear, terror, fashion, fashion, like fashion. If you go on YouTube, you can see that little thing that they stuck on, slapped on to the beginning of the movie, and it's it's hysterical. Just oh well. Yeah, just go go on YouTube and put in like "Blind Dead Revenge from Planet Eight. And you'll get that opening two-minute segment. Let the buyer beware. The buyer beware. No kidding. No, but that you know that that happened a number of times. I mean, it, maybe not to this extreme, <laughs> but they they would rename films a lot a lot of times to, uh, especially later in the seventies and into the eighties and almost oh, sure. into the nineties as well to put them into a franchise where they didn't belong. Well, it, it was either we were talk it was either. We were talking about it, or you all were talking about it with the second film. I can't remember if it's the first or the second. But the first or second Blind Dead film is literally like Black Demon 4 and Black Demon 5. <laughs> Some, but how under does, different how distributors. That, how does that happen? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, here's uh, some other films from the, the director. Armando. Yes, that's him on top with a, with a friend. And... Um, there's the Lorelei's Grass, um, Night of the Sorcerers. Malenka, which I think was Fangs of the Living Dead, is what was released in this country. We did Demon oh. Witch Child. We and oh, the Sea Serpent, so bad, so bad. So bad? Yeah. Mm. We'll, do, we'll do Night of the Sorcerers sometime. That's one I keep on my short list of things to throw out. Lorelei's Grass, we, we haven't done that one. Okay. No, I don't think we've no. done that one. Either. No, I don't think we have. No, haven't. We and can do all of them. Actually, yeah, Lorelei's Grass was actually one that uh, that Santos spoke very highly of the few times that mm. uh, that came up when we were talking about Blind Dead. Because mm -hmm. that was the one that he and I had both seen and nobody else on the panel had seen. It's actually, it's where it's actually a very interesting dark fairy tale story. Hmm. And it's it's actually worth putting into the rotation. I don't what think any of the say so what? What what other name is it under? Um I, I don't actually I, I don't think it's in America under a different name. It's uh, just the Lorelei's uh uh Lorelei's grasp. Yeah, it's the one below that that's under a different name. The one below that's known as Fangs oh. of the Living Dead. Yeah, right. The, uh, the was it Matilda? What is it? Malenka. 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 
Matilda. Okay, <laughs> so, I don't I don't know what you're talking about because I've seen nothing on here about Lorelai. The one, the the very first one underneath the blind dead guy, it says there's, there's two, something de Lorelai. Yeah. The thing with the hand going at a woman like this. Yeah. That's Lorelai's graph. Yeah, I'm not I'm not looking at the posters. I'm looking at IMDB. Oh. I'm not seeing it. Hmm. You know it's one of his. Matter of fact, there's a blue oh, I, believe that, I, believe I think it's uh, I think it's under when the screaming stops. Oh, that may be. His, his films seem to get a lot of alternate titles. Yeah. There is a Blu-ray out there. It may, may still be in print that was like a $10 yeah. Blu-ray from, I think, Scream Factory. And it's got Night of the Sorcerer and Lorelai's Grasp on it as a double feature. Nice. It's actually good prints, both of them. Yeah. In IMDb, it is listed under When the Screaming Stops. Yeah, which I've never seen it under that title. I never yeah, have either. Either I've uh, seen yeah. Orlai's grasp under. It. Also, keep it. Watch out, Jeff. You got to look under director, not writer. I guess he didn't write it, but yeah, yeah. I'm under. I, I was under director. No, he he, yeah. he wrote it. He wrote yeah. it. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. So why is he okay? When the it's just not. It just as it just yeah. You know, I am D. A. Russell does a freaking yeah. name. <laughs> I second Bill on Night of the Sorcerer, although I don't know. That's one of the, that's another one of those kind of like Planet of the Vampires. I don't know why mm. it's called Night of the Sorcerer, be, Sorcerers because it's vampire. 100% vampires, yeah. Oh, I've seen that one where the girl's head is in yeah. the little. Yeah. Um, the burn her head's in there. And. And it, it, okay. Night of the okay. Sorcerers, Night of the Sorcerers is also kind of a for the films he did at the time, The Blind Dead and all of these others. Like there's there's one thing actually paying attention to it to be able to talk about it better tonight that I noticed with uh, the Ghost Galleon, and I realized I was thinking about it with some of his other films. There's some moments of nudity in the first Blind Dead, but a lot of his films, including Lorelai, which is like there's a girls school and all these other opportunities and he doesn't actually do very much nudity um and ghost galleon has these moments where you think okay they're about to do the right. requisite you okay you've got to sit, and they still don't do it but like night of the sorcerers that's like okay everybody take your tops off that's Get right in the blood yeah. pool. no and you're right and i i wonder if there were different cuts you know, for different regions, you know, because you're right. There are a lot of opportunities where, you know, here's, here's this couple, the, you know, these women who clearly there's at least some lesbianism on, on the intent of one of them doesn't seem to go very far in this movie. Could there have been another scene in there for the French market or the Japanese market? I don't know. Mm -hmm. this, that does happen a lot. The stuff of legends. Yeah. <laughs> I know in the first film, and Doc can back me up on this, because there's two uh, prints in America that were put on uh, really good DVD and Blu-ray where you get the American cut, and there's a scene where the two friends have, like, the flashback to college, and there's that hint that they had a brief sapphic relationship. But then you see the Spanish cut, which is the alternate on the Blu-ray, which is in a different position in the film on that cut, and it's slightly longer and a little more revealing. Mm -hmm. So there was definite there was definitely some alternate cuts for the European market. Yeah. No. But I don't know how how much that happened throughout it, his career with the other movies. And that and that's why it's like Night of the Sorcerer is like it stands a, out. A jarring difference. All right. Well, let's let's talk about some of the uh, cast members. We'll talk about uh, Maria Percy first, um, who's in two of the three pictures. <laughs> and Bill's face blindness comes through in the clinch. Um, <laughs> she was quite the dish, and and I, I and she, know, I don't know she, most of her films, but she was certainly something for a time. 
Yeah, and let's just be um, just for those that might be a little confused by all the blondness. Which one was she? Which character is she? She's the she's one that's definitely the lady on top. She's Lillian, I think. She's the one that's looking for her friends, right? The one they trap in a room. No, no, no. Is she the one that's she's on the, the boat one originally? In the, in the middle, in the middle picture, she's the one on the right. She's the boss lady. She's the boss lady. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. So I was, and I was other, even more confused than I thought it was. Another movie, right? Hmm. The top picture is from another movie, right? Oh yeah, that was just a. I just was looking for a you know a publicity shot of her. Yeah, and see that's a oh, man. I mean, she's great in it, but the character is not is kind of despicable because oh, she's awful. yeah, but she's not the only one and dumb. You know? <laughs> but then everyone is dumb. Wow. Well, in context, we should, yeah. We should mention to the audience that hasn't seen this. The whole premise of this is that for a publicity stunt. They they basically take two models and cut them adrift into the ocean, and and things go horribly wrong as anyone would think they might with that bad idea, mm -hmm. and then a, a, one of the friends, one of the roommates, comes looking for her, and they basically rape and kidnap her and go looking for these people. It's just every decision they make is the wrong one. It's just so dopey. And just when you're about to just give up on them. And the evil dead show up in the the, the blind dead, the evil blind mm -hmm. dead. Well, look, she was in a number of um, some pretty good trash here. Exorcist, Euro the trash, of the morgue. <laughs> House of Psychotic Women, which has a different title that I think I knew it as, but I can't remember for the life of me um, what it was. So she made some Paul Nashi films. She did indeed. That, that's cool. But she made some, uh, you know, I, I see somewhere she uh, co-starred with uh, Montgomery Cliff, Rock Hudson, Cliff Robertson. Um, yeah. So. Blue Eyes of the Broken Doll. I think that's, oh, that yeah. might be what House of Psychotic it is. was, which is a very poetic, sounds <laughs> very giallo to me. Yeah, she was also in Murders in the Real trying, World. Trying. Assignment Terror. Oh my gosh. Oh no, she was uh she was uncredited. I don't think she actually made it into the cut. She's in the Castle of Fu Manchu. Oh God help us all. Poor thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. And then exorcism that you have, which I think you have it as exorcismo there. That's the that's the one that uh, Paul Nashi did, right? Right. I think so. Uh -huh. So she did some Paul Nashies. She did some Jess Franco. Very good. Spain. Uh, very good. I don't know, but well, I mean, very good. Right? Yeah, and she yeah. passed away in it's a two thousand four. She did make a lot of films, so you know it's got what she has um, eighty two credits. That's respectable. Did yeah. you did you say that my husband prefers virgins? Did you say that one? No, no, but that's a great title. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> My husband prefers virgins. It, it, it kind of is. It, it's, it's a illicit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Let's look at Jack Taylor. And we have uh, two sets because this is. Um, oh, man. Uh, what, where are these films from? Well, or, this is are, this is just the one I, I mean, one? we just did Conan a, a few weeks back. And uh, this is the. One I had because I loved his brief but memorable role as the uh, priest hits on Conan and gets hit. But mm -hmm. also that he was in Jess Franco's Dracula, the one Jess Franco movie that I unreservedly, reservedly like. As Succubus actually is another one. Listen, I, I go on Jess Franco a lot. I, I don't like the vast majority of his films. And he made like 300 films. So that's a lot of films not to like. But that being said, he also made a number of them, especially early on when I think he was given more of a budget and stuff that are definitely worth watching. And this guy was clearly a favorite of his. Um, and, and he's good. He's, he's good in it. Um, he's got a distinctive look. He's got very piercing eyes. Um, I like him. I like this guy. So in, in our movie, what what is the character he plays? How would you describe him? An idiot, but that's the description I have well, for everyone in this Yeah, movie. yeah, but, but in, in the group of four, which is three people that work together and then the one person that they kind of hijacked, 
how what's his role in that? Is he the is he the rich guy or is he the yes the yeah. captive? He's the fellow? rich guy. He's the rich guy. But he's not. Oh, he's and there's the also the sporting goods magnate. Magnet. The sporting yes. goods magnate. Oh. Yes, a magnet. Yes, he was a magnet. Morning, good magnet. I think he's the genius who came up with this great idea of marooning he was. dim bulbs on a boat. Yeah, now he's trying to CYA. So, yeah. No, you keep you keep knocking this, but apparently the movie was about 40, 50 years ahead of its time because today we just call that TikTok and influencers. Nah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, let's hang off a building for as long as we can film it yeah yeah and if this were if this were happening today department of homeland security would probably be raiding this guy's uh mansion and, mm. yeah. well, back to back to the the female star though i mean she was pretty cold i mean oh she was awful they're on that ship and she she goes hey you know what if we get there and there we don't find them oh yeah well then what do we do with naomi yeah, we'll just get rid of her, her and the professor. Nobody knows her with Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's just gonna cost her overboard. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's what I was saying. These people, you you know, they, they have no redeeming qualities. Yeah, and the ones that yeah. do, they they're the first to go. Right. That, that's one thing I'm I'm always curious about with this film is oh, I've never seen, unlike the first blind dead film, I've never seen the Spanish language with subtitles. And I always wonder if some of the the dubbing was rewritten by mm -hmm. like an absolute idiot. In a, in a <laughs> are you, are you, you're talking about this one? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've uh, I've never seen like that somebody that uh, it was basically an mm -hmm. idiot in some fly by night distributor's office. They're they're doing that to do the American distribution. And the person doesn't know how to write and he doesn't know how to handle characters because or translate. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah. Because there there are some there are some definite sleaze bags in the first and second film. Sure. It, but some of them are but there are some decent characters and the sleaze bags kind of have a point, you know, like the, the corrupt politician and um the the black market. Uh, dealer who who has his issues you still have some of the decent characters in this one everybody is just awful stupid and occasionally sleazy and there doesn't actually seem to be a point to any of that it's not there to rep to maybe kind of represent something like in the other films it's just it is like I said. It's literally like an idiot was just giving right dialogue that kind of works for this. Kind of, okay. kind of works. Yeah. <laughs> you might be, you might be absolutely be right. They just kind of took their best shot. Didn't really worry about it. Because I, yeah, I, I, I honestly, it's like I said, I've never seen a Spanish print of this with subtitles, and I've never known anybody who's seen a Spanish language version and could actually say one way or the other. Yeah, they totally mangled this. This is, you know, on on the level of like the first home video dub of "Let the Right One In." Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I would like to see these in their original language of subtitles. It'd be be far more interesting to kind of you know, you feel you can really get their inflection and stuff. Yeah, because there is a big as much as the first movie is good, there is a big difference in watching the dub versus the subtitle mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. They're both really good in that case, but there's a noticeable difference. Yeah, the story we got seems into a little that more. With the H. Which we one? We got into that with the H-Man. Some of the subtitles uh, that's true. are different. Yeah. You know, even yeah. on the Japanese ones, they, they translate them differently. I, you know, you got to wonder about algorithms here. So Jack Taylor was in a movie called Rest in Pieces. Have you guys seen that? No. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sounds familiar. Which also had uh, Dorothy Malone, directed by Jose Ramon Lares. Now, hmm. when you get an IMDb, when you come down here and there's the uh, more like this, you know, a list of movies, Shriek of the Mutilated and The Incredible Melting Man are, the, are hmm. um, 
Yes. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> You're mentioning some... Uh, nothing somewhere. Nothing in this movie. Well, I mean, Shriek of the Mutilated is a very bad movie. But, uh, I like Shriek of the Mutilated. <laughs> but we want, but we had fun watching it. But, oh, it's, sure. but it's a bad movie. It's it's uh, a bad movie. It's pretty bad. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about the knights for a hot second because uh, the knights are awesome. But what this is this is not from this film. No, no. I just you know. So I just wanted to say that it's interesting. Um, I've always found it interesting. That these are the Knights Templar, and the actual story of the Knights Templar is a fascinating one. They were some consider them one of the first multinational businesses they they were a group of well-trained warrior priests brothers whatever uh, they fought during the crusades they established a sort of a banking system before there was such a thing and they amassed an incredible amount of wealth to the point where the king or prince or duke of france or whatever owed them a great deal of money and rather than pay it back he started a rumor that they were actually satan worshiping evil doers and convinced the pope to have them banned many of them were put on trial found guilty after being tortured into confessions and may well have had their eyes eaten out by crows and everything but it's it's pretty obviously a raw deal and yet in this mythology yeah they were 100 percent evil they this the whole idea of these blind dead is that these guys were you know were corrupted they worship the devil and um you know did all sorts of unsavory things like we see here and i you know cut it at the appropriate point here because eventually i believe this young lady lost her top and uh yeah so sorry guys i mean i really feel like they've been kind of smacked around by history but okay hey that's what happens when you lose the moral of the story folks is um, don't lose <laughs> yeah, don't lose. Don't lose because not only there's there may not be any justice in the world. Next thing you know, they're making a whole movie series about how evil you are. It's like we were railroaded. Like, yeah, that's what you say. <laughs> and here's uh, some uh, shots of the blind dead. Are is this from all four films? No, I think this is all supposed no, to be. No, these are all from this one. Oh, is this yeah. all from this one? Okay. They're just so look at them. They're so dirty and dusty and nasty looking in there just completely rotted away skeletal they sh i thank god they move slow because how stupid would it be if these guys are they shouldn't be able to move at all they have no muscles left yeah you know forget about you character. don't understand supernatural physics now, that's the thing they are <laughs> all, all the you know they they do continue you know and this is again, and they're in a different dimension of you course know, we they talk about around. zombies zombies originally <laughs> were supernatural or supposed to be supernatural um, yeah, really, when does a revenant become a zombie or a zombie become a revenant? Certainly, once we get into the Romero thing, magic is pretty much gone. I guess uh, maybe Lucio Fulci kept it going. But, um, you know, not now zombies are clearly something other than this. Yeah. But dang, they are just a cool, cool, cool visual. And yeah. uh, whatever else these films may not have going for them. They got mood, mood up the wazoo, and and just a, a terrific visual. Yeah, well, and the, like the vi the visual of the second one, them coming toward the camera, the light, oh, they mm -hmm. look great. And then the the third one down is one of the more intense scenes in the movie. That's when they chase yeah. that girl throughout the ship, and they slowly drag her back down this. <laughs> That's the only the way they do it. things. It takes forever, That's but fine. it it's so great, and it's actually yeah. creepy. And like that's the shot there is even when it gets you know because you know. Mm -hmm. When she gets down there, no good's going to happen. But I thought it was going to end there. It don't. Mm. <laughs> uh, that that's Dude. actually uh, from from the time that she sees them to the time when they chop her head off, almost lop off her head, <laughs> is over is over four minutes. Four minutes of them but just yeah. yeah they yeah. they shamble towards her. And then yeah. they grab her and shamble back. And probably doesn't she best, like doesn't she like hurt her point. hurt her leg or something? I forget how I, I they thought about. They, they, they get a hold of her. Would they drag her back down the things? Yeah. I love well, it. what I didn't get yeah. in this movie, I swear, everybody that gets attacked by the blind dead, uh, they they walk backwards, mm -hmm. and they walk themselves into a corner, sure, or into a up against uh, ropes or or. Uh, uh, can't think of what you call it, but rigging, you know, something. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. It's just sort of like turn around and run. They're not ever going to catch you. Although, run where? I mean, yeah, that's true. Run circles around the, around the ship. Or give them, <laughs> give them run circles. Give a good hard punch to the snout. I'll bet they'd crumble like a stale breadstick. Mm. But we'll never know. But, uh, no, the, the, the blind dead themselves, that's one of the things that I, it, even with having said this one feels sometimes kind of like it jumped was the, the film that jumped the shark in the series and you can see where as low budget as the first two were this one feels even more low budget the blinded themselves are still impressive because there's a lot of movies american european asian whatever um you get that low budget and they're supposed to have some freaky old thing coming out of a tomb and it's like we'll wrap it with something and throw some powder on it yeah. and make sure that you know powder moves around in all three films i can't believe that these are going to be like the same blind dead masks and the same whatever from the first film some of them may be recycled but i, I can't believe all of them are mm. um just because where where a lot of that stuff wouldn't where would they store it Mm -hmm. uh you've got no budget maybe you can keep a few but they all look like just they look hundreds of years old yeah they do. Um, they do. they're all done with such care absolutely that they yeah. they make all of those scenes work because when you look at them you that you immediately get sucked into that and that last scene where like jeff was saying four and a half minutes or so that the um the two things with that uh and we discussed it in the first film uh if you look up the director and put like artwork in there he has spent years including before doing these films doing all sorts of painting and eventually he started mm -hmm. painting like a lot of blind dead um but he's an artist he and he has that beautiful yeah. artist's eye for framing something right yeah, and always he's always puts that yeah. yeah he always puts that on display so well in these and he understands the same thing that i think a lot of low budget not a lot of low budget directors understood um but you see it in like that's that wonderful eye scene in zombie 2. um you don't have to do things fast if you do it right you yeah. can really drag it out and it's all the more horrific because you're sitting on the edge of your seat waiting for it to happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's happening yeah. in front of you but it's not happening yet and you're still waiting yeah. and you're slowly, an doing, <laughs> yeah, you're slowly Slow doing this down. towards the screen yeah and, it, and it's, it's such it's such a great contrast to the you know you got these beautiful young women with their mod model outfits and they're being assaulted by these nasty crusty they could not be any older mummified you know that's that's a terrific poetic contrast right there and mm. it really works sounds well, like yeah, uh, was, return of the living dead right yeah mm -hmm. yeah i was joking about the the length of the scene but it is it's really well done and the woman barbara ray the actress who plays blonde in that third picture down she does an amazing job for <laughs> I think so. the amount of time that she has to be scared out of her wits and mm -hmm. uh starting to escape and not escaping and, and getting dragged back and then the cuts right at the end of that when uh one of the knights grabs a sword it's so quick you don't really even not even sure what he did I had to I had to rewind it and look at it uh and see the handle of the sword and then Mm -hmm. Same thing with her head. I don't think they quite lopped it all the way off. It there's mm -hmm. a gaping neck wound there, uh, and it's just like flash of the you know, a, like a split second of the sword and then a swish. And there's anyway, it was yep. very. Then with all a that slow, and then that yeah. boom boom. You know? Yeah, yep. and a couple shots of them eating hands and stuff like that, right. pulling yep. up body parts. Uh, one yeah, one of the right. things I, yeah, one of the reasons I think that the Knights Templar work so well is that they're so nightmarish. Mm -hmm. They're they're you know in your nightmares, 
things don't always come at you fast, but yet they're still scary and they're always right. there no matter how far you run. And it always feels like you're running in marshmallow anyway, when you're in a dream. So to me, if you think of them in that respect, as opposed to just being, why are these guys so slow? It really is effective as a nightmare. And they kind of set it up that way as being in an alternate dimension. So it all kind of falls together for me to make this work um, for this particular film, at least. Um, but yeah, the, at least, yeah, go ahead, Jerry. In the, in the constant, never ending, probably never will end arguments in the horror community on fast versus slow zombies. Mm -hmm. One of the things on the slow zombie proponents will say about like Romero's zombies that I don't completely agree with, with his zombies. Um, and particularly from the first film is that they say that, well, they're scary because they represent inevitable death. No matter, no matter how fast you are, mm -hmm. they may be slow, but they're always going to keep coming. Eventually they'll, they'll, they'll get you. And I've n I don't subscribe to that to slow zombies, but these guys, particularly the way a lot of the the situations are set up in the films, mm -hmm. um, that's that's what they feel like to me. They are the inevitable inevitability of death coming at yeah. you. They look <laughs> it, they act it. The scenes are set up in a way that it feels it. It's like you you can't get away. It's going to get you. It may yeah. be the slowest, dumbest, blindest, <laughs> deafest thing in the world, but it's going to get you. Yeah. And you can't get away. Yeah, well, yeah I, I think zombies. Go ahead, Doc. I was going to say zombies nowadays are more about disease. Um, you yeah. Know, yeah. You, you, yeah. It, even though they originally were set up, like you were saying, it's just death, but now they're, they're disease you know, ridden, at least from Romero zombies forward. Um, of course, the original zombies are voodoo zombies, and they represent an entirely different type of aspect of horror. But um, although I yeah. like the left, I like the left turn that we got with uh, the girl with all the gifts, and with um, mm, okay. yes, everybody know. else. Everybody else is going to yell at me. The video game that became a series, um, the last, the last of us, last of us, last of us. Yeah, it was like let let's play around with. Fungus zombies. Right, right. Yep. Still disease, though. The fungus is still sure. disease. Did I have a slide that had pictures from the ending? Yes, that's up next. Oh, oh okay. And, and, oh yeah. my God, can we talk? Okay. Oh, well, well, Rick, I had what, to do what, a screen before, grab. Before, before we get lost, what was Jeff going to say? Oh. Because I'm actually interested. What you started saying something. Oh, well, I started to, uh, I went back to, Started to watch the first one just to remind me of the origins and stuff, and that the you know their slow motion is really kind of poetic, and yeah. we, we joke about them on the horses, but the slow motion horses too. Very cool. The, the whole thing are just it's it's uh, it's poetry in motion, and sometimes you see I see stuff like that and it looks kind of dumb, but that, he knows how to do it and he knows how to do it right, and it looks yeah. wonderful. And the interesting thing about it is when the girl steals a horse and goes riding away, uh, her horse starts going in slow motion. <laughs> yeah. Know. But they, huh. they catch her. You know, As they, they would her. in a dream. Go, Wait a minute. These are I, I do anyway, wonder what would, have, what would have happened if he'd had, if he'd been given like a decent budget. Because I feel like all the films I've seen oh. from De Osorio are pretty low budget affairs if he'd been maybe given the opportunity i don't know that he would have been another bava or argento but uh, he had a lot to offer and you know one of the unfortunate things i think is if you prove that you can do stuff on a low budget word gets out and the budgets get lower because you know the producers are not looking to to make art they're looking to make a profit and if they think you can squeeze out something that can sell for very little money they will just try to see how little money they can give you. Yeah. But yeah, God, there is no excuse for that top picture. That, <laughs> oh my God, that is so. I mean, Jessica yeah, Franco you, would have would have sent that back, you know, and said, "Do it again." Yeah. If you thought the train looked funny in the uh, Horror Express, you ain't seen <laughs> nothing yet. This how thing, small oh was that prop? I mean that that looks like those are the size of flames you get from yeah. a big lighter. I think that the. 
for me, the thing that made it look really bad is they had these tattered sails on it. So even when they're just showing the ship before it starts on fire, those those tattered sails look like the kind of things you string on models. Yep. Yeah. They don't they don't flap like a tattered sail at all, you know. And so you're looking at it and you go, Well, that ain't right. That's right yeah. off the bat. Something is in the uncanny valley, although yeah, I don't know. Can inanimate objects be in the uncanny valley? I don't think but they I, even I, I, tried to slow it down. You know, if you have if you have real flame that looks like it's three inches tall, you could at least do it in slow motion and give the illusion that these are big flames going up. But no effort was made to the, the only good thing about what they did is it's all happened at night. So mm -hmm. it's like awful, and and it ultimately doesn't matter. It doesn't kill the film, it doesn't save it. <laughs> there was another there was another dimension, so it could have been a miniature ship. Right? Oh, yeah. oh my god, yeah. it could have been. It could have been <laughs> another it's dimension. In yeah. Fireworks there, there are there are scenes in this movie that are questionable, but there's no there there are no scenes if I'm showing somebody this for the first time where I'm loaning a copy that I'm like yeah, just kind of grin and bear it through this scene or do what, you know, whatever, or laugh. That scene, if I'm like actually watching it with somebody who's never seen it before, I'm kind of like, put your beer down. Don't have any food in your mouth. Yeah. Watch this. This is hilarious. And literally what Bill said, tell me how big you think this ship is. Because <laughs> it looks, when I, when, I, when I said that joke before, when I said the one joke before, honest to God, when the first time I saw that movie, um, I thought that it may, and it's to this day, every time after that, it makes me think whenever Benny Hill would do a parody of like Titanic or something like that, or <laughs> a ship moving on, and they would always film like the toy boat in the studio sink. Mm -hmm. And honest <laughs> to God, that's yeah. what it makes me think of. I swear we didn't even film this in a bathtub. It looks like they just lined the bottom of a sink. Mm. Because it's it can't be much bigger than this. Or here we go. Can't be much bigger than this. It's it's ridiculous. And, and you know, it's also not necessary. It's it's an insert shot. I mean, they they do a pretty good job of making it look like it's on fire with you know putting strategic fire pots and stuff and everything. You don't need the the big shot. They insist and, and one, it just. Uh. But all that being said, that's a kick ass ending. That is a kid, and, and I was sh genuinely shocked when I saw it because I should have. I, I don't know why I was shocked. It was the 1970s, and uh, unhappy endings and horror movies yes. were pretty much the default expectation. And it's not like these two deserve to get away. They didn't. Absolutely not. And they didn't. And that's. I the, love you're talking about composition. The yeah. negative space on that bottom picture. Oh man, I that's love. The, I love the shot of all them leaning over into the shot. We've <laughs> seen that. Yeah. In other movies before too, right? Or after, if not before. It reminds me of the poster from Horror Hotel, actually. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, that's it's right. Great, it's great. <laughs> and look but at Jack Taylor with his eyes, like yikes. Yep, she oh, doesn't even God. wake up. She's like, she's... Yeah. <laughs> well, no, she does. She does wake up and turn no, around. Up. And when up. she looks, that's when we, well, that's when it cuts to the bottom shot. Now, yeah. in fairness, it should have taken these things two weeks to make that journey from that sinking ship underwater to the beach. I mean, they are slow, but okay. you know, another dimension. Well, they didn't have to walk. They could just let the current carry. Yes. Yeah, so they just kind so of, if, if the tide was coming in, maybe we didn't see the scene where they're hanging 10 on a surfboard or something. Yeah, baby. Oh, what if they, what if <laughs> they rode coffins? And the what if they had a scene where they're like on top of coffins? Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay. I got to remind you, uh, Bill, the professor, at this one quote that we didn't use, and at the end of it, it says, "Nothing is real. Science would deny it, but it doesn't exist." I think he, he's talking about science. Yeah. Although the yeah. translation's not that close, I'm sure, but uh, science doesn't exist. So then, who's the yeah? Same? But they're but they're not in the dimension anymore, or are they? Is this a yeah. maybe in that dimension? Maybe the entire movie took place on a ship that was only this big. Yeah, maybe. And there's some kid above watching it. That's why. That's why that other ship couldn't see him. Yeah, <laughs> too tiny. <tight. laughs> it all makes sense. Oh well. Oh, well. oh there yeah, you. And we and and for anybody that hasn't seen it, because we keep referencing this, but we didn't explain it. 
in, in part of the pseudoscience that they were making up for the film, <laughs> they get to this they get to this point where it's like there's the they actually established that there's a legend because the the scientist originally for some reason they go to him instead of proper authorities. And it's like we need your help, and it's like well they're lost at sea. Fine, screw them, they're dead. And then they said something about the galleon, and he's like the galleon. They say see a galleon. Really? What galleon? Oh, there's a story of the galleon. And he starts going into this, and it's like there's a galleon sailing around in the dark, but it's only in the dark because it's in another dimension. And you're not there, but if you see it, you're there. But you're not there. But if you get on it, now you're there, and you're stuck, and you can't get out. Mm -hmm. And even though that made no sense to anybody that's watching and or listening mm -hmm. and just heard that, that probably made more sense than the way they explained it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> then, <laughs> then I, I think mean, he tells them, you won't be back when they say they're going to go. Well, we're going to go mm -hmm. anyway. Well, you won't come yeah. back. And then, can I go with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you Which then goes back to, I don't think the idiot who did this. Okay. Yep. You only survive if I go with you is what it should have said. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, he, anyway. No, but the, it it wasn't uh, it wasn't stupid like uh, Santa, it wasn't as bad as Santa. Blue yes, Blue. Yeah. <laughs> or, or what did you say, Jerry? Well, you said it wasn't stupid like um um what the Loch Ness horror. Mm, the Loch Ness. Well, I, was the, I was thinking of the dubbing and, the, and that stuff. So. As far as I'm concerned, we have no idea what the script said. <laughs> yeah. No, that that That's that ending is like that and it uh shockwaves. Yes. Yes. It's like, shockwaves. Or it's like I love you can make as much fun of shockwaves as you want and some of this, the stuff that's in it that doesn't make sense or isn't explained well. But when those Nazi zombies start their heads start coming up. And then they start rising up. They're walking up out of the surf. There's something that's just really, really cool about that. But it's not super scary. It's just kind of, this is a really cool shot. The, the blind dead coming up out of the surf, first you see their heads, then you get the shoulders. And then like we were discussing earlier, like water starts coming out of what are the empty cavities of what used to be flesh and used to be eyes and and this bizarre pouring sound that you're hearing and then they're slowly moving up on the beach it's like that didn't just look cool that actually looks like it that's that belongs in a horror movie that's right. that's just so beautifully creepy and so well put together i love that scene it, it almost it by itself almost makes the whole movie worth it just getting to that ending I love anytime the knights are on the boat. I love the, I love how the, the blue hues. I love the atmosphere. Yeah, there's yeah. always the fog is always just off screen. <laughs> it's always, <laughs> and then when they look down to see their boat, it goes, <laughs> it vanishes right in front of them. I'm like, okay, you're screwed. All right, well there you go. Um, I think we've we've talked about um, the ghost galleon as about as much as anybody would endure. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'd love to hear your comments down below. We love your comments. Please let us know what you think of this. Does this, uh, where does this sit in the four films? Is it, is it your favorite or should it float away? Is number four out of the four, Jerry says. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Four out of four. Four out of four. Well, I haven't seen the fourth one, so it's number three Trust out of four us. right now. Yeah, just when nice you bonus. watch. What's Have that? you ever seen a Blu ray of this? I believe I have there's one out there, but I don't remember if it there's, was an American Blu-ray. Isn't there a set that was in a coffin? That was that all was DVDs. DVDs. Yeah. There I were DVDs. Okay. Yeah. Because that was all four movies plus that bonus disc I was talking about, which is like all the interviews and the special features and things like that. Yeah, I remember that being released, but I didn't I couldn't remember if it was Blu-ray or DVD. That was I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there is a Ghost Galleon Blu-ray. Um, if it if it's American, it's obviously Scream Factory, right? But uh, I think I'm pretty sure it's uh, uh foreign. I Scream Factory did the 
Night of the Seagulls, I think, but not. Yeah, I, I know they did Night of because I grabbed their Night of the Seagulls. That's why I'm saying if there's a Blu-ray in America, they, they probably did it. But I know I've seen Blu-rays, but most of the time it's like Region 2 or something. Uh, there's a... I think it might have come out from Blue Underground. Uh, I think that's a... Is that a DVD? I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say I, once you get it. I really found cool, one. It? Uh, I did find one. And I can't remember where it was. It was, uh, But it was unavailable. But it didn't mm. say out of print. You know, it was... Blue Underground was the people that did the coffin set, I think. Okay. So, and they only had the, the license long enough. They didn't have it into Blu-ray. So probably what you're seeing is uh, one of the, because they sold it as a coffin set and then mm -hmm. they sold them individually without the bonus disc after the coffin set. Uh, gotcha. Set. Yeah. So I, I don't think there is a, a U.S. Blu-ray at least, our, our region. Um, well, there you go. Uh, Jerry. What, I, what I was starting to tell you is uh, for, on the on the ranking for Doc. When, yeah. when you, like like I've said in previous discussions on it, when you sit down to watch it, when you finally get around to it, you sit down to watch it. And the same for anybody else listening. If you want to get ahead of the crew and watch all four of them, if you can find them, do not base your expectations on the first three films. Base your expectations on somebody doing an HP Lovecraft riff and then the blind dead sort of just show up <laughs> guest star the blind well, dead <laughs> they, 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 he actually worked them in better i think or more intelligently than in this film in as far as interweaving them into the purpose of the story mm -hmm. but yeah it it's it's an h it's an hp lovecraft story up to the point of without giving spoilers to you or anybody else there is a, a statue, like this idol, that's central to the, the plot. And mm -hmm. when you see it, it's one of the like misshapen, big eyed, fish men, HP Lovecraft looking creatures. So it's it's definitely an HP Lovecraft story. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think like like Bill and I were saying before, unfortunately, I think by then Blind Dead was like the albatross around his neck, like uh zombies became for romero and it was like nah we're only going to finance you it's blind dead film that's 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 all you got it's like, all right well. all right on uh diabolic dvd yes and i'm not exactly sure who the maker is but it lists ghost galleon blu-ray all region and it says uh in Castellano English and Italian audio and Castellano and English subtitles. But it mm. is out of stock. Which means it's probably out of print. And there's a wait list. There's a wait list. So, uh, uh, anyway. Interesting. Interesting. Well, there's the copy um, I've never seen and said I would love to see. Watch, watching it in the uh, 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 Spanish language. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, because yeah, when I, I started watching uh, Tombs of the Blind Dead on Shutter, it's in Spanish. Yeah, it's, and Spanish. it's got English subtitles. So, anyway, perfect. All right. Well, do, um, speaking of feedback, Jeff Moore, do we have feedback for tonight? Uh, we do. We absolutely do. Uh, just on a couple of episodes, and just a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got some. Yeah, we got plenty. Uh, all right. So first up is uh, episode two hundred nine, the Mad Butcher. Speaking of Dicker Bueno, um, <laughs> who wants to take this from Mikey Z? I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, the Mad Butcher, Mikey Z, has to say, heard of this film? Never saw it. Glad it's now available. Victor Bueno. <laughs> How bad can it be? From Baby Jane to Sweet Charlotte, Batman the Apes franchise, he was ambiguous. He knew how to be quietly, campily menacing, gone too soon. Great podcast guy. Guys, even, plural. Um, hungry now, Polish sausage or German kielbasa? Uh, 
go with Polish sausage. Uh, here, Alto Lehman sent me a sausage of the month box. Anyone seen Chad's Aunt Petunia? I haven't seen her in a while. Boy, these are delicious. Mm, mm. So, uh, yeah. if, if, Doc, you, were, you weren't there, but uh, on the uh, Hunchback from Notre Dame silent film with Mike mm -hmm. Z, Chad told some story about a dream with his Aunt Petunia, which was, which was yep. a big put on, but Mikey Z is, is, <laughs> it has become a thing now. Dan's mm. Thank you, Mikey. Uh, next up, episode 210, and hey, I love me some Polish sausage, bratwurst, German kill. Uh, Countess Dracula, episode 210, also from Mikey Z. Uh, let's see, Bill. Oh, okay. I, I, hey, hang, hang on. I uh, I think it's almost fitting if you throw that one at me, considering how many times I have made Bill suffer <laughs> through reading an entire novel. The wall of uh, there is a novel here. Well, yeah. this is a longer yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, yeah, go right ahead. We give, we give Bill a break, <laughs> and he gets to to watch me do the same. Sure. <sighs> All right, Mikey Z, Countess Dracula, Hammer Seventies. One of their best, Ingrid Pitt and Nigel Green dominate this film. Gregory done good. Sleep rock in the 70s. I first became aware of this film when I wasn't quite 10 years of age. As I always loved film and I lived about three blocks from the local public library, I would frequent it every weekend. It was there that I saw a book that contained images of the then racy scenes from Hammer Films. There were boobies. Boobies. Young Mikey, yes, young Mikey was fascinated and wanted to see more. Mikey, you you were fascinated and wanted to see more of Hammer or the boobies. You can uh, boobies. Th th throw that answer in somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm putting five on boobies. It's not clear. Unfortunately, I knew I would not be able to take this book out, so I had to settle on the images I had seen. On another visit, I came across another book that featured scenes from Countess Dracula, one being the bloodbath scene. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until about seven years later that I caught an edited version on local TV. And by that time, like Bill had read Radu Flores Hughes in search of Dracula, and it mentioned the legend of Madame Bathory and her little peccadilloes. As Gregory mentioned, not the usual Dracula fare for Hammer, but not as bad as others around this same time. My favorite scene is the first time the Countess discovers the effect of virgin blood on her wrinkled cheek. Her intonation of bring her here after the servant has fled is chilling. You know that no good will befall this involuntary donor. Also, the scene where she awakens to find she is aging, you feel for her as she prays to God to maintain the image of youth. Trivia. Nigel Green was in the Ipris file as the head of an opposing British governmental department who has a reason not to allow Harry Palmer to proceed with his investigation. Podcast guys, nice to see Gregory in the flesh, so to speak. <laughs> Yep, that was a Gregory Crosby pick as yeah. he joined us that day. Thank you, Mikey. Uh, Thanks, Mike. Well, and Mikey, I, I, Mikey, despite what you wrote, I hope eventually you did get to see more boobies and didn't just have to settle on the ones in the book yeah. at yes. the library. I have no doubt. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, follow that up with uh, one from King Fisher on Countess Dracula. Okay. Uh, much briefer, Kingfisher says, love the atmosphere and general look of this film, very different from the classic gothic of 50s, 60s Hammer. Perfect casting, too. Great review. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kingfisher. Yeah, excellent. And then we have one from Jose. Jose! Am I taking that one? Sure. Why don't you? Why don't you? Uh, good film. I rewatch this now and then on the old Midnight Movies DVD. I know what Gregory and the rest of you mean about dubbing. For years, I watched the movie The Black Hole, and there's <gasps> just something off about it, and I couldn't put my finger on it. When I watched it a couple of years back, it was obvious. 90% of the movie is post-looped, and the voices sound kind of dead. 
There is no natural room ambiance. And to make it worse, in one scene, Ernest Borgnine speaks with Tony Perkins' voice. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, time to watch that again. Uh, that, <laughs> yes, no kidding. That would make it worse. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think. Uh, I think maybe I've been blissfully injured of that. Uh, and then, Doc, we have one from Robert Baker. Uh, Robert Baker and, says about, are we still talking about? Uh, Countess Dracula. Countess yeah. Dracula, excellent, excellent. Robert Baker says, uh, glad this one was finally covered. I like it and agree. It was uh, very similar to Rasputin the Bad Monk in that it took a historical figure and made a movie in the Hammer's style. I also think that Ingrid Pitt's real voice was fine. The accent gave her an exotic touch and would have been <laughs> that would have been fine. Some may not be aware that in the 90s she would briefly reprise the bathroom role in an unexpected manner. Hmm. An extreme metal band, Cradle of Filth. <laughs> Great old Phil released a concept album based on Elizabeth Bathory's life called Cruelty and the Beast. At various points, female voice actors could uh, would read bits of spoken word during the songs. When the album reached the end of Bathory's life, Ingrid Pitt read the part of Elizabeth Bathory as she was in her prison and near death. The band even credited her as being the glamour of Hammer in a role played to perfection twice which I thought was nice tribute and a notion I agree with wholeheartedly. Love how far reaching and inspiring uh, these classic films can still be even decades after their original release. True. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's absolutely true. Um, yes. Thank you, Robert. It was an interesting Robert, film. I don't know more than you do about this stuff. Yeah, Robert sends great emails. He, always, uh, he does it by email. I love it. Um. <laughs> That was an interesting trend in the 80s. Like there were a lot of oh, heavy no metal bands, bands yeah. Yeah, that, that were doing like concept albums and getting actors who might have been maybe not as in demand to do voiceover stuff. It's like Orson Welles was doing stuff from Manowar. Uh, Ingrid Pitt, like he just mentioned, was the Cradle of Filth. There was like several others. And I, it was like this big thing, 80s and 90s. I don't think you ever saw anything really like it again until like Christopher Lee suddenly became the thing and suddenly everybody was like running to him to do voiceovers on metal albums. True. Yeah, and Neither, he, yeah. None of you are heavy metal fans. I can tell. Uh, you need to <laughs> complete you need for that one. I think. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, he makes a good point here and the idea of, of Ingrid Pitt, I would much rather have heard Ingrid Pitt's voice, but the dubbing didn't sound totally whacked out, yeah. terrible, like didn't belong there like it does in, in this. So anyway. Right. Yeah, but Hammer, Hammer seemed, when Hammer needed to do that, I think even in their dying days, even, even in their low budget, lower budgeted dying days, they seemed really good with that because like, I think it was usually you can figure that out fairly easily. And I think it was like 20 years after I first saw it, and I realized that Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter was not speaking with the actor's voice. Mm. It was like I, I happened to like read that in a trivia thing and I was like, what? What? And you're going back and watching it. It's like they did it so perfectly, even knowing it. And the same thing with, with this film. You look at it and even knowing it, it's like, it does not seem obvious. In well, you know, the difference that you guys brought up, the uh, difference between a distributor selling it in the U.S. and uh, you know, the, the studio taking care of it. And doing well, they it. are they are dubbing in their own language. So, yeah. yeah. Well, true. true. <laughs> As opposed to dubbing it in a different language. Well, we appreciate then all the Then you have to match the mouth as well, so. Yeah, but sometimes uh, that doesn't even work in America. It's like uh, Greystoke Legend of Tarzan. You you can see where sometimes that one slips up a little. Mm -hmm. so it's like <laughs> that's why I was saying ha Hammer did it really really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks to Mikey Z, Kingfisher, Jose, and Robert Baker for their comments yes. for this episode. Uh, we love your comments, so please, uh, if you. Think of anything, you know, if any of the episodes that we do strikes a chord, then let us know your experience with that movie or maybe things that we missed or things that you know that we didn't know. 
or questions or suggestions. Yep. I was getting ready to say, don't forget suggestions. Yeah. Because Jerry, Jerry should back us up that we love to get our suggestions. Oh, yeah. right <laughs> uh, do we have, speaking of suggestions, has anybody picked our next film, Jeff Moore? Somebody has, and his name is Bill. His Bill. name is Bill, and his it's, it's Bill. one that's that's been suggested to us a number of times. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I remember it being very stylish and very strange. It's Daughters of Darkness. Mm. That one has uh, that has risen to the surface a couple of times. Yes. Yes, and, and it's sort of tangentially related to Countess Dracula in some listed as a Bathory film. Yes. Well, and I, uh, since uh, Gregory since, Crosby uh, talked about that, I invited him for that episode. Um, ah. And uh, maybe Chad will be back, so there may be five of us then. Which oh, wow. Will, will probably be like a, a two and a half hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, your, your, your schedule is pretty stacked, but at the rate you're going with some of these vampire films, this particular genre of vampire films, if Bill's yeah. picking that one now, you're only like two or three more of them away from Velvet Vampire, and then from there, and, and yeah. then from there, you're you're pretty much down to vampires with a Y, which is yeah. There's there's, there's, there's a yeah. number of those. Yeah, we, we, we have in the last like six months. We've done uh, Lust for Vampires, a Vampire yeah. Woman, uh, yeah. Blood Spattered oh, Vampire. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Wait, Dracula. Bill's, but, Bill's favorite. I'm sorry, I forget. Vampire Hookers. Oh God! Are we there yet? Wait, is that the one? Is that's not the one with Larry Niven, is it? Um, no, that's that's uh, Old Man Dracula. This is the one with uh, Old Carradine. Man Dracula. This is the one with Carradine. Okay. Senior, not Junior. Okay. Uh, that was uh, filmed in the Philippines. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, man's got to eat. Man's got to eat. <laughs> but, <laughs> at five ex-wives, I mean, you got to take what they offer. Mm. Mm. It ain't I'm, Frankenstein honestly, Island, but okay. Honestly, I'd love to see you all try to like have a discussion about vampires with a the with why? a Y, not an I. Yeah, because that's that's the one where they got like like the two models, and mm. they're really they, for, for jogging maybe Jeff's memory because I don't know if he's seen this one. There's no plot, really. There's no story. It was like, hey, we've got ninety what? minutes to fill. Let's just film two naked. Vampires. Oh. Yeah, I don't I haven't seen that one. And it's amazingly, <laughs> it's not a Jess Franco film. Yeah, it's it's actually pretty good. I always think of vampire from yeah, uh, yeah. 1930. Yeah. yeah. Getting fancy yeah. with the but it doesn't have an E at the end like this one does. This has an E. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. That's our review of the Ghost Galleon. I uh, hope you enjoyed our time together and our feedback. Please give us uh, feedback and we'll Put that on the next episode. Uh, no, no, I got to go find the one with the two naked women the whole movie. There you go. <laughs> Always got to go chase down the one with the two naked women. Right. All right. Uh, with that, uh, we thank you for listening. And Jeff, Bill, and Jerry, thank you for uh, joining us uh, for yes, this review. Thank you. thank you so much. A lot of fun. Uh, excellent. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jerry. Yeah, Sorry it's been I'll so see. long. You know, no Jerry problem. joined us for a couple of I'll see of, Bill uh, in a month. That's my right. favorite mm. episodes, too. Nice. Um, I was nice. I was trying to look up which ones because he did uh, Black Scorpion, and he did Night of the Demon, and then uh, I remember in seventies he did Psychomania. Yeah, Blind oh. Dead, Psychomania, Psychomania. I love that film. And Did one you, day you'll see like... him when we're talking about Demonoid. Mmm, Demonoid. Jeez, I'm, I'm run away. All right, guys. Uh, with that, let's say good night. Night, everybody. Good night, everybody. It's the crawling hand. Good night. <laughs>